Quadratic functions, intercept or factored form. How to graph an intercept or factored form. What are they? Quadratic functions are polynomial functions with one or more variables where the highest exponent of the variable is two. Why? It starts to branch to learn complex numbers. Interesting fact, water buffalo milk has higher levels of protein and calcium than cow milk and is used to make products like cheese, ghee, and suti paneer. Now, let's take a look at an example of a quadratic function in intercept or factored form, so we can get a feel for it. Remember, the form we want is f of x is equal to a times the quantity of x minus p times the quantity of x minus q, where p and q are the x-intercepts. One key bit of information we need is the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry goes through the vertex. In this case, the axis of symmetry is the line x is equal to zero. The great thing about the axis of symmetry is that it cuts the graph in half. So we can pick any two points horizontally and count towards the axis of symmetry and it will be the same, whether it's closer to the vertex or further away. What do we think is one key bit of information that we haven't talked about yet? That's correct, the vertex. The vertex can be a minimum or maximum point, and in this case, we have a minimum at 0, negative 1. Now, let's talk about how do we know if there's a minimum or maximum value. When A is positive, we will have a U-shape, since all the output values will be positive, so the graph will go up. So there will be a minimum value, which is the Y part of the vertex. What do we think that means if A is negative? That's correct. We will have an upside down U since all the output values will be negative, so the graph will go down. So there will be a maximum value, which is the Y part of the vertex. Now, let's put all this into action by taking a look at the examples we're going to discuss in today's video. Let's take a closer look at example one. Now, let's read the steps. Step one, find the x-intercepts. Step two, find the average of the x-intercepts. Step three, Find the y-coordinate of the vertex. Step 4. Graph. Now, let's read the question. Graph the function y is equal to the quantity of x plus 1 times the quantity of x minus 3. Let's rewrite the function with some hidden numbers and symbols so we can see easier what is happening. So we have y is equal to 1 times the quantity of x plus 1 times the quantity of x minus 3. Our first step is to find the x-intercepts. What do we think is another name for the x-intercepts? That's correct. They're also called the zeros. So let's set each binomial term equal to zero and solve. First, let's start with x plus one is equal to zero. We can drop the parentheses and subtract one on both sides. So our first x-intercept is x is equal to negative one. Now, we can plot it on the graph. Second, let's continue with x minus 3 is equal to 0. So we can drop the parentheses and add 3 to both sides. So our second x-intercept is x is equal to 3. Now, let's plot it on the graph. Now, there are multiple ways to continue here. We're going to use the graph and then check it algebraically. What do we think is one key bit of information that we haven't talked about yet? That's correct. The axis of symmetry. Remember, the points horizontally are equidistant from the axis of symmetry. So if we count from each point until they meet, we can find the axis of symmetry. So that means the axis of symmetry is x is equal to 1. Now, let's find the axis of symmetry using numbers. Since the axis of symmetry is in the middle of the graph, we can find the average of the two x-intercepts. Now, let's substitute negative 1 for the first x-intercept and 3 for the second x-intercept. So we have x is equal to negative 1 plus 3 all over 2, and negative 1 plus 3 is 2, and 2 over 2 is 1. Now that we've checked the axis of symmetry, what do we think is the last bit of key information we need to graph our quadratic function? That is correct, the vertex. Do we know if we have a minimum or a maximum? Well, let's find out. We need to use the axis of symmetry which is the x part of the vertex, to find the y part of the vertex. Now, let's substitute 1 for each x, 
So now we have y is equal to the quantity of 1 plus 1 times the quantity of 1 minus 3. And 1 plus 1 is 2, and 1 minus 3 is negative 2. And 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. So the y part of the vertex is negative 4. Let's match those numbers together to find the vertex, which is 1, negative 4. Now, let's plot it. So, we have a minimum. Let's take a look on why that is the case. We need to look at the a value. In this case, it is positive 1. Since we have a positive number, we know the graph goes up. So our minimum value is negative 4. And that is example 1. Let's move on to example 2. Now, let's read the question. Graph the function y is equal to negative 2 times the quantity of x plus 3 times the quantity of x minus 1. Let's rewrite the function with some hidden numbers and symbols so we can see easier what is happening. So we have y is equal to negative 2 times the quantity of x plus 3 times the quantity of x minus 1. Our first step is to find the x-intercepts. What do we think is another name for the x-intercepts? That's correct. They are also called the zeros. So, let's set each binomial term equal to zero and solve. First, let's start with x plus three is equal to zero. We can draw up the parentheses and subtract three on both sides. So our first x-intercept is x is equal to negative three. Now, we can plot it on the graph. Second, let's continue with x minus one is equal to zero. We can draw up the parentheses and add one to both sides. So our second x-intercept is x is equal to one. Now, let's plot it on the graph. Once again, there are multiple ways to continue here. We're going to use the graph and then check it algebraically. What do we think is one key bit of information that we haven't talked about yet? That is correct the axis of symmetry. Remember, the points horizontally are equidistant from the axis of symmetry. So if we count from each point until they meet, we can find the axis of symmetry. So that means the axis of symmetry is x is equal to negative one. Since the axis of symmetry is in the middle of the graph, we can find the average of the two x-intercepts. Now, let's substitute negative three for the first x-intercept and one for the second x-intercept. So we have x is equal to negative three plus one all over two. And negative three plus one is negative two. And negative two over two is negative one. Now that we checked the axis of symmetry, what do we think is the last bit of key information we need to graph our quadratic function? That is correct, the vertex. Do we know if we have a minimum or a maximum? Well, let's find out. We need to use the axis of symmetry, which is the x part of the vertex, to find the y part of the vertex. Now, let's substitute negative one for each x. So now we have y is equal to negative two times the quantity of negative one plus three times the quantity of negative one minus one. And negative one plus three is two, and negative one minus one is negative two. And negative two times two times negative two is eight. So the y part of the vertex is eight. Let's match those numbers together to find the vertex, which is negative one, eight. Now, let's plot it. So we have a maximum. Let's take a look on why that is the case. We need to look at the a value. In this case, it is negative two. Since we have a negative number, we know the graph goes down. So our maximum value is eight. And that is example two. Now, it is your turn. So go ahead and pause the video here so you can take your time to answer this question. And I will show you the results in three, two, and one. Here, we plotted the x-intercepts and found the axis of symmetry. Here, we found the vertex to graph the rest of the function. Did you get it correct? Fantastic. If not, there's always tomorrow.